well is it a little sketchy sure but we had to get high enough off of this because we're hitting right here got a couple places rubbing we also got to line it up so we got it mostly lined up so we can get our mounts correct today is a good day guys we are out here working on my dad's 1962 chevy one ton dually and as you can see we got the cab right here mocked up on top of this other frame which is a 78 one ton dually uh, gmc i think um, that's because we're getting four wheel drive on her today oh well, maybe not today but you know we're gonna be swapping it over so we can have four wheel drive a couple other things like disc brakes power steering i'll have ac that's a couple little cool things now this is the old frame right here on the old engine and as you can see it's uh pretty worn she has seen a lot of miles guys we've had this truck uh he bought it about 17 years ago and it came with the 283 right now it's got small block 400 in it pretty cool looking engine too i like the old hot rod look to it but everything on it is kind of well used and and pretty worn guys so it's time that this cab gets some new life now this bed back here is a old service box that was built by warehouser so warehouser actually bought this truck new in 62 and then used it as their service truck uh, if you're from washington then you'll know what warehouser is but if you're not then they own a whole bunch of land out here and do a bunch of logging and stuff but you can see this is some really just hefty diamond plating this is a pretty beastly of a box this is very stout um, really heavy too so i think this truck weighed weighed in at about seven thousand pounds really heavy but we got some nice wheels and tires on it pretty cool little uh spikes and stuff for the the lugs it does have uh well, i don't think you can see it but it does have uh airbags on the back just to help out with the weight for when we tow like trailers and campers and stuff got the body up over here the cab got it kind of just sitting up on some blocks and stuff right here taking measurements getting the mounts ready eventually it'll end up in the shop and we'll be lifting it up and down and and really putting it on there but right now just kind of getting a general idea of what we got going on guys so i did just want to show you some of the stuff that we got going on right now i'm going to be popping on over to the mac and giving you updates on that and then also plans with the white um i'll do not doing a full video on the body swap with the uh, 62 but i will be giving updates on it and showing you guys how it all comes together but let's get over to this mac right now and i'll show you some things about it truck number 10 right here pretty much been doing all the videos on truck 10 i'll have to do a video on truck number nine but for right now truck 10 is running off its own fuel tank and truck number nine is not yet we haven't done that process yet but i'm going to show you truck number 10 and i'm going to hop up in this thing and uh show you how easy it starts now it has been sitting for i think about two weeks now we haven't really had time to play around with it she has not been getting the love that she deserves but we've been busy so uh let's see it'll probably take a couple cranks and this thing's going to be a little bit annoying when the uh buzzer goes off but i'll show you it, it's been starting up really easy guys so check this out there it goes All right, sorry about the loud buzzer, but it just took a couple cranks to get some fuel up in there. And man, she fires right up, guys. I'm very impressed with this engine. I am very impressed with this, this truck, this kind of as a whole. Okay, so the buzzer has died down, building air pressure. Guys, this truck is absolutely incredible. So we did do a little bit more cleaning. We took the uh, liner out because it was sinking down and it actually looks pretty good back here. Um, but like I said, we have not done too much with this truck since but we have done a little digging and one of the cool things that we have found is this uh right down here there's a switch right here i think it's right there could be but uh which one is it yeah it's that one so it's this one right here so i know people have been asking about the air horn and the buzzer or the uh the siren i mean and turns out this doesn't do anything right here but down there, that little switch on the floorboard is the air horn. So it's for the passenger in these fire trucks. But if you push your foot on this right here, 
<laughs> you get a you get a nice loud horn and let me tell you what this thing is loud guys i was up under here under the hood when my dad was digging around in here and uh, he blew the horn i dang near hit my head on the on the hood right there scared the crap out of me all right so gonna go ahead and shut her down and let's go over some some of our plans with this truck guys all right so going forward with this truck we do have quite a few things that we have to address in order to actually take it on a more real um road journey if you will a first drive so we did take it kind of just down across the street to the neighbor's house looped around and came back real quick drive but it was driving now some things that we do have to take care of are well this whole dash clutch there up here um so i think actually fuel gauge is working speedometer sort of works um you know but water temperature so that gauge is uh is not working right now and if you are going to take this out on something that you're not going to be really able to observe on it like out on the main road then you're definitely going to want some water temperature so we do have like the the heat gun and when we're doing our longer runs with it we are checking the temperatures but you can't do that if you're driving down the road for 15 or 20 minutes so that is a must especially with uh you know a, tr a truck like this and an engine that is i want to say delicate but it does feel like it's kind of delicate you really want to take care of it now none of the other real like electrical things are working so headlights don't work taillights don't work turn signals none of that is working so we have to go through all of that um i'm sure it's mostly just the uh, the points are just all corroded and judging by how everything was in the engine bay then i'm sure they're just you know corroded and we just need to clean those all up so we got to get that going before we can even think about really taking it out on its first run but we do want to get that going uh and as soon as we finish up my dad's truck which we, we got a kind of a time frame on because he wants to take it camping um, within the next month. So we're kind of really just busting our butts on that one right there. And then we'll get to the Mac and then we'll get to the white. Um, but we, we are planning on taking it to a gas station, filling it up, which is going to be a very hefty bill. Uh, I think these trucks came with a 75 gallon tank. This one potentially could have came with a 100 gallon tank. Um, but it is it is not a cheap vehicle to drive. I think it gets two to three gallons per mile. A lot of people are, are commenting about that. So we will be taking it to a gas station, seeing how it goes, uh, driving it down the main road. And if, if we you know take it through this process and everything starts to go uh, pretty smoothly, then we will be taking it to a car show here, a fairly local car show. Um, Binford's Field of Dreams. If you guys are from Washington, go check it out. It's a really awesome place. But we will be taking it down there, hopefully. That's the plan within maybe a month, month and a half, uh, depending on how fast we can get all this stuff going. So she's still got quite a bit of work to do. But overall, the, the goal here is to clean it up. It needs a bunch of TLC, really. It, it needs to be like completely gone through and cleaned up. We haven't done much with the interior. We gotta blow it all out, clean it all up, get it all looking nice. Um, but soon soon we will be taking it on an actual real drive and going down and i'll probably record most of it and you know show some of the reactions to the fire truck um i think it'll be a, a pretty big hit at the show taking it down getting it fueled up driving it around having it fully road ready and it'll be it'll be a pretty exciting uh, feat i think i think i'm really excited to actually take it out on the road and see how it does because people have been talking non-stop about how good these engines are and how like actually fast these trucks go especially compared to the uh the old trucks of the day we do need to get this tachometer working so there's a tack in this truck truck number nine does not have a tachometer in it we do have a tachometer for it i was i'm not sure what is going on with these things because it seems like they were taken out of both trucks and then maybe the guy who bought the trucks originally um like bought tachometers for it and it also comes with a couple of these so there's only supposed to be two so the one from the engine and it goes to a splitter and then it has one that goes to the back for the pump and then one up here so we have extra we have i think like six of them and they're only supposed to have four so there's extra of these and this one is hooked up but it's like broken it's not working correctly we have i don't know we looked at it a little bit but haven't really dug in too much with it but that is something that we do need to address we need to get these tachometer working so we do have a tachometer for truck number nine over there and uh this truck has one in it it's just not working correctly it, it is loose and wiggling around in there it's mounted but it is i think it's broken so we, we definitely got to dig into that now another thing people have been asking about was let's see 
the mileage. So 84,000 miles on this one. And I think truck number nine has 82,000 miles. I don't know, I, I can go over there and check it out, but 84,000 miles on this truck. Uh, siren, um, spotlights and beacons and all that. It has none of that. It doesn't have any of the lights. I did find a, uh, a like a police be beacon, so it's a red beacon. Uh, not period correct by any means, but maybe might do something with that. But there's not, all those were taken off. Maybe we'll have to figure out something with that. I don't know how easy it will be to find period correct sirens and lights. But if we can, then we'll go ahead and pick some up and, and maybe get it working back to a full fire truck. I think that'd be pretty sweet. All right, so over here in truck number nine, you see right here, 82,000 miles. So it's pretty right about that. Um, but she is a bit more rough. We have not cleaned up nearly as much in this truck or done as much in this truck yet, but it will also be on the list. I think we're gonna do truck number 10. Truck number 10 is more set up to be road ready at this stage. Um, and that is because it does have, so right here on truck number 10, it has the air brake. So it has spring air brakes and this one has the old school handbrake. So what that means is that when this truck, truck number nine runs out of air, you have no brakes. So in truck number 10, when you run out of air, the spring brake slowly closes and then will slow you down or stop you or, you know, safety measures, I guess. And I think that's because truck number 10 was uh, refurbished by the fire department and kept in service for a long time. Now, other cool things that truck number 10 has is under the seat over here, it has a 12 volt to 120 volt converter and it's got a plug on the outside. So I'm assuming that's for fire department stuff so you can use it if you're on a call or something like that, right? And you can see here, there's no tachometer here. Um, I think all the electrical is gonna be in the exact same condition, nothing works. Um, there is no siren, there's no lights. It does have the horn down there. The horn does work, so that is pretty sweet. But this one is kind of on the back burner right now as far as what truck we're gonna choose to get running. Um, I do like the patina on this truck better and it does have the sweet uh, Dalmatian dog up there. So we do like this truck a little bit better, but truck number 10 just seemed to be in a, in a little bit better stage for the first truck to work on. But don't worry guys, we will be getting to this truck and uh, we will be getting them both running. I think eventually one, one of the plans that we have is to drive them both down the road. Cause I mean, how cool would that be to have two trucks, two fire trucks identical driving down the road? I think that would be absolutely sweet. So that's about it for, for the fire truck update. Now I'm gonna pop on over here to this white. So the 1949 white, lots and lots of cool comments about this guys. People are really liking the rat rod idea. People are loving the truck. And to be honest, I love this truck. I am super stoked about this truck and you know, we kind of taken on more than we could chew right now, having two fire trucks to work on and this, but you know, it popped up and we couldn't resist. So we had to get it. So I have seen people say, you know, talking about restoring it or rat rotting it or not wanting it rat rotted or, you know, completely cut up or nothing like that. And don't worry, for the most part, we are gonna be keeping the entire look of this truck. I don't want to paint it or nothing. I love the patina. I love the look of it. I, I love the tow mechanism on the back. So all that's gonna be getting kept the only thing that we're really gonna do offhand is uh tires these tires are trash guys um especially this one right here this one on the inside has big gouges taken out of it i do not trust these tires i don't even like rolling it around uh, i it, it's really sketchy but what we do want to do is get some new wheels and tires for it and then potentially take out a couple springs in the front and I want to drop this bumper down to the ground you know drop it down just a little bit and give it a really cool look so before we even think about getting this truck on a drive taking it for its first drive we do have to address these rear brakes here so we did take out the cage bolt right here it actually goes right here there's a, a little spot for it right on the side of the brake canister but even with them fully we had them like fully loosened up uh, and there still was no brake action coming on back here. So uh, presumably the pads, the drums, the cam in there, everything is probably just really worn and there's no contact being made. Now, these are like a spring brake system, but they're old and they're a little different than I'm used to, but we kind of getting it figured out. Got a lot of really good comments about them and uh, people kind of helped us figure this out. So we really appreciate the comments guys, but we do have to take this all apart and dig into these brakes and see what's going on with them. Uh, that shouldn't be too horrible, I don't think. Um, hopefully it goes pretty smoothly and then we'll be able to take it for a ride. We also have to dig into this 
winch system. So the the PTO and the three-speed auxiliary transmission, these uh like let's see down here, these rods right here, those are locked up. You get you get no action from the levers, you can't engage or disengage or do anything with it. So I think we'll just have to break those free. I do think that both of them are gonna work. I don't think they're locked up inside of it at all. I think it's just that outside pin right there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and break that free and then hopefully we can get some winch action going but that'll be on a little bit later of a video i think first we want to do the brakes get some wheels and tires on it and then just take it for a little drive first now there is no lights brake lights there is well these lights right here but i don't know if those will be a, of much use so we do need to get some lights going on on this thing and i do want to clean up this interior so you can see like for the most part the rust isn't really that bad it's a lot of just surface rust so maybe get a sandblaster or something in here but i do want to paint it i'm thinking kind of like a darker gray for this thing i think that'd give it a real cool look and we'll keep these seats for now they are pretty trash but maybe eventually we'll end up with uh, some cool seats and maybe some harnesses or something just give it a pretty cool look now let's talk power so this little uh slant 6 225 right here probably isn't going to cut it for the kind of power that we're thinking for this thing now we have been seeing a lot of you guys comments and we have had some similar ideas so we have been throwing around a, a idea of a detroit diesel but finding one uh you know i don't i don't know exactly what size engine we could fit in here it is fairly big it's tall but also like back in this firewall back here um you can't push this back much any anymore so you got kind of like limited space right there and then also to the front but you do have a lot of height in here so maybe we'll get a detroit diesel in here but finding a good candidate is kind of difficult they're not that common to find so if we can find one maybe we'll we will do that we've also been throwing around the idea of finding a hall scott but again uh those are damn near impossible to find and also can get a little pricey other ideas we've had is throwing like a, a cummins in here or I think a, a Duramax diesel would be really cool in here, but that also might just be a little out of our price range because, you know, we're just trying to keep it cheap, but also trying to have some fun with it. Uh, there is the tried and true big block. Just throwing a big block Chevy in here. Uh, we have a couple of those in the garage, actually, and those are pretty easy to find. Get a good transmission to mount up to it. Oh, and speaking of transmission, so actually this truck has a uh, dodge 445 new process transmission so it's a four speed actually i know i said it was an eaton five speed but that's just what the guy that we got it from told us um so we didn't actually know until i looked on the plaque on the side but it's a 445 so it's a pretty beefy transmission actually and they're, from what i understand they're pretty sought after i think if we did do like a a big block or something like that it would be the cheapest and probably easiest option it'd fit right in here almost perfectly this this frame is about the same width as my uh, 71 gmc over there so it would be a really easy one to do but if we did do that then i think we should do something like a little extra special on it you know maybe like throw a, a supercharger or a turbo on it or something and a blower i don't know we'll think of something cool so it's not just a basic big block if we decide to go that route it's kind of just going to depend on what we're able to find and something that makes sense for our price range but we do want to take out this slant six so she will be a pretty sweet truck i think by the time we're done with it and you guys will be seeing it on the road and driving it around i really want to take it to a show i think it'll steal the show really this thing just it has that look it has an it factor you know so still lots more to come with this truck guys let us know what you think in the comments down below and uh, i'm gonna go ahead i just hooked up a battery got some gas in it so hopefully she'll start back up it has been just over a week i think since we've had it running so Hopefully we can get it started up here pretty quick, but I'll leave you guys on this. Let's see, pull out the choke, ignition on. I got nothing. All right, battery cables are actually tight this time. It should, oh, there it goes, come on. Oh my goodness. Let's get some gas up in there. Come on. Let that pump work, come on. go she fires right up guys so that's about it for this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe let us know what you think about these trucks and there's gonna be a lot more to come stay tuned